Hello and welcome to the 2024 Southland Softball Season Previews. And I'm joined right now by head coach Justin Lewis and Alexa Poche from Nichols State University. Coach, how are you guys doing today? We're good. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Alexa, thank you for being with us. How are you doing heading into your senior year? I'm great. I'm excited. And how's preseason been, Alexa? I'll start with you. You know, we're getting ready just a couple of days away now. How's the preseason been? It's been good. A little bittersweet, you know, it's my last time in preseason. So um, just a lot of hard work being put in. I'm ready to get started. Awesome. And coach for you, after such a successful year last year, you are the reigning South and coach of the year. What does a, an accolade like that mean to you as, as you start this 2024 season? Well, and for me personally, it's really just that that they recognize the the hard work that that these young ladies have put in, and um, and and my staff that the, the hard work that they put in, and and so just recognition of the program is, is you know overall is is just awesome. I mean, I didn't throw a single ball or swing a single bat, so uh, I take very little credit for it. So, uh, just, but the program in general, it, it, it's it's really nice to, to see the people recognize it. And certainly it was recognized because of the humongous improvement record wise from year one to year two under your leadership. Is there anything in particular that you can put that down to in, in what allowed last year to be so successful for you? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, we brought in a lot more talent, right? I mean, you can't be on the wrong side of talent and and we were definitely uh, uh, our first year. And so uh, 13 freshmen and four transfers, um, but it's not just talent. I mean, we've been working really, really hard to to create an environment where these young ladies want to actually be. And uh, if you can't do that, then you know they're they're human, and and like all humans, if, if we're in a bad environment. We're just going to mentally check out. And so, talent's still number one, but number one A to us is our environment. And so, uh, we we work real hard on that. Alexa, for you, and, sorry, and, and and if we do that the wins will take care of themselves. Right. And so that's kind of the last part of the formula there. We don't, we don't focus on the wins all that much, but if we get really talented kids in here, uh, coach them hard, love them to death and create that environment where they'd rather be in that dugout and in that locker room with, with their teammates more than anywhere else in the world, then yeah, the wins will take care of themselves. And Alexa, obviously talking about wins and taking care of themselves, you know, with you six seniors, What's the determination like within that that group of young women? You know, you've obviously been playing with them for a number of years now. How's the kind of mindset been amongst the senior class heading into 2024? Um, I think as a collective, we all can agree that we definitely want to get a ring because none of us have gotten one since we've been here. Um, so that's just the number one priority. And we're all willing to do whatever it takes to get that done. I know Coach has been very humble and giving you guys a lot of the credit, right? But I'm sure you would recognize that Coach has made a big impact on this program. So from, from your perspective and, and, and the players in general, how would you describe, you know, Coach's style and, and the improvements he's been able to make on this program at Nichols? Um, and none of it would be possible without him, honestly. <laughs> just the way he leads us, just coaching individually as a team, like he cares for us. And you don't find that a lot of times with coaches – so it makes it really easy to play for him and want to do well for him because he cares so much about us and does so much for us. That goes completely unnoticed. Coach, I'm glad you got to hear those words because you definitely deserve it. Um, as we look forward to, to 2024, what a schedule that you've put together. Uh, we open at LSU in just a couple of days here, also bringing the Tigers uh, down there to Thibodeau, Ole Miss, Texas, Raging Cajuns, Florida State what were you thinking in putting that schedule together and and what was the idea of testing yourselves against so many top five teams well so last year's schedule you know with so many youngsters you know we started five or six freshmen and and two sophomores every game last year and so last year's schedule was more about boosting confidence and and getting them ready um but the the downside of last year's schedule is that i didn't feel like especially in the preseason that once we got into conference i don't think we were ready um especially, you know, for, for pitching wise. And so uh, I think we lost some games early in conference that I don't think we should have lost. And it was just specifically because we weren't ready uh, for the, for the velocity and, 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 you know, some of the pitching that that's in our conference. So this year's, and, and honestly, we also, we dealt with a lot of nerve issues, you know, with the young ladies, we didn't have, you know, even our lone senior last year hadn't played in a meaningful ball game her entire career here. So 
last year and the, and the run we made, you know, at the end and to the, and to the conference tournament, those were the first games that even Alexa and, and Melissa had, had even played in, in meaningful games. Right. So um, that's what last year was about. And last year's schedule was kind of that. And this year um, they're ready, you know, and, and we're still young. I mean, with all those babies, there's now only sophomores. So they're still, they're still babies, um, but they're ready. And, and, and the schedule, listen, like we're, we're not going to deal with nerve issues. I'm sure they're going to be nervous on Thursday, but we're going to get all that out of the way early. And uh, we decided to, to make the schedule much more challenging so that uh, really ultimately what matters is, is the conference. And, and so being ready on, on day one of, of, of the conference season is, is what's most important. And, uh, and you want to see where you stack up anyways, right? I mean, we're trying to build a program that, that is geared to go, you know, do what McNeese has done, right? McNeese is, is the, the gold standard in the conference right now and and being able to go make some noise in a regional is what you know kind of team we're trying to build so you got to go play those teams and uh you might take some lumps but you might also surprise some people but at the end of the day you're going to learn something and uh I, I think it's a it's a just a necessary step and Alexa from from your side and, and the squad in general it's going to be a lot of excitement getting to test yourselves against such big names in the college landscape Oh, yeah, we're all definitely excited. Definitely not afraid of a little challenge. And who doesn't love a good underdog story? You know, we're ready to go shock some people. 100%. And I guess the excitement of, of playing those schools and the opportunity to shock them, but that really comes down to, you know, your leadership style and, and, and the squad that you've built there in that locker room. So when you talk about kind of the culture of your locker, locker room, how would you explain that to some of the newcomers who, who have joined your roster this year? I try not to explain it at all um, because if it, it, this is like the most special team that I've been around right now, as far as chemistry and, you know, you don't always have to get along to win on the field, but dang, it sure helps. Um, and so right now um, it's a real special group. And so when we get recruits in or we have camps, I don't try to say anything. I just let them be around the girls and the girls actually sell the program because it's authentic um, and people can feel the authenticity of of the love that they have for each other. Um, they just care about each other's success. And again, that's, I mean, yes, we, we hand selected them, but they still have to put in that work and they still have to choose not to, you know, have things divide them and, and pettiness and all those kind of things that, that tend to happen. And, and again, that just goes part of that thing that, that, environment training that we we do that a lot and we focus on it a lot and um doesn't mean we don't have our issues it just means that we handle our issues and we're not afraid to have difficult conversations and um and that's what you do when you love people is is you want what's best for them and sometimes uh love uh stings a little bit from time to time alexa for you personally you know the season you had last year you could be described as playing up game numbers and it wouldn't be unrealistic right fifth in the southland in batting average all all conference first team all tournament number two play on sports center as well you know it was an incredible year for you how do you go about trying to top that in 2024 um i don't necessarily focus on trying to top that i just focus on trying to win for my team and like doing whatever is necessary if i take care of that then you know all the accolades and whatever may come may not but that's the most important goal is just winning and so that's where I pour my energy into, not any personal accolades. And, and Coach, I, I wanted to touch back on the, the tournament we had last year. And one of the memories that really stuck out in my mind was the performance of Molly Yo uh, as, as a first-year pitcher and the performance she had during that tournament. What does she and the rest of that pitching staff have in store for us this year in, in 2024? Uh, well, hopefully that last year was something for her to build on top of, right? And and she's a she's a special talent, uh, special human. Uh, you'll never you won't find a more gentle soul. Um, and and yeah, she's got electric stuff. And so uh, hopefully everyone stays healthy and we go through the season and and you're just building on top of it. And so it's a kid that um, you know it can be a program changer. And so you you really hope to get those kind of kids in your program and. Um, and watch them develop through the through the years and, and just get better and better. And she works her butt off. And so everything she gets is because she works. And yeah, she's talented, but she's where she's at because she works like nobody's nobody else. And so uh, from a, a, trying to develop a culture of work and you bring kids like that in and, and she sets the example for everybody else in that bullpen. And um, yeah, special uh, between her and Audrey. I mean, they'll they'll both be, you know, kind of the, the two main ones, but uh, we can't just be 
those two this year, we, you know, we, they took us as far as they could last year and we need other people to step up and help um, or else we'll only go as far as those two will, will take us again. And, and in this game, you need multiple arms to, to get through the, the, the season. It's long and we want them to be fresh towards the end. And last year they were a little gas towards the end, but that, that last game uh, that she pitched uh, in the tournament against Corpus, I mean, it was, it was just a, a glimpse of, of the possibilities for that young lady. And Alexa, obviously, you already spoke about the desire to to try and get a ring in, in what's what's your last go around here. Um, how do you use the memory of last year's tournament as, as motivation for this year's down in Hammond, Louisiana? Um, I think that in conference tournament, we made a good little run, but we weren't fully satisfied just because, you know, we had some games that we dropped that we probably shouldn't have. And just using that feeling of like knowing we can take these games, but also learning from the times that we did well and the excitement that comes with it. Like we want that feeling and we want that the entire tournament, not just for some games. So just using that, like both the good and the bad from how we did in the tournament last year to really push us to, you know, make it to the championship this year. Awesome. And, and just lastly, Alexa, I want to just have a little bit of fun with you here. So indulge me for one second. If, if Coach Lewis wasn't a softball coach, what would his job be? obvious answer firefighter you know but <laughs> um no that's what i'd be I, yeah. I tried everything else i you know my story i've been and done everything and so uh yeah the fire, fire department they say is the greatest job in the world and i, I was an idiot and left it um but that was mm -hmm. you know my drawback to to my desire to help young people develop into the people they are meant to become is was greater than uh, scraping old naked men up off the toilet. So, um, you know, it was a no brainer move for me, but it's a great job. And, and you know, the camaraderie that that the fire service brings, um, that's why you see so many former athletes in it. And, you know, you get over playing the game, but you you miss the locker room. You miss, you know, hanging out with your buddies. And that's that's what the, the fire service is, obviously. And you're helping people, which is even more gratifying. But yeah, that's exactly what I'd be doing. I'd be, <laughs> that's what I'd be doing. Well, we thank you for that. And, you know, we're just grateful that you made the decision to come and join us here in the Southland. And I know that everyone down in Thibodeau feels the same. So Alexa, coach, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate you chatting with us. And we'll wish you nothing but best of luck for the whole of 2024. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks you. For having us.